All right, we have ultrasound for wound healing. Um, as you can see, Brianna's our patient, but she doesn't actually have a wound. So we're going to pretend, but um, she would say she had like an ulcer on her leg. Um, first, what you would want to do is apply hy um, sterile hydrogel to the wound, um, especially if it's a deep wound, you want to fill it up kind of to the brim of the skin. And then you place a uh, transparent hydrogel sheet over it. Um, there's actually a couple different types of coverings that you can put over it, um, but hydrogel sheet is the most common. So, um, and then after that, you put the um, ultrasound gel on top of the hydrogel, and then you can just start your ultrasound as normal. Again, if the wound's really big, you still only want it to be like one and a half to two times bigger than the actual sound of the actual head of the ultrasound. Um, so if it's really big, you have to take it in parts and do like one part of the wound and then another part and uh, et cetera. So we don't have really the hydrogel or the, um, yeah, sheet dressing over it, so that's kind of just explaining to you what would happen. And here's kind of a picture I was going to show. I don't know if the camera can get this, but that's kind of a picture of the setup. I think it's a nice does a nice job of kind of showing you. That's in your modalities book uh, on page 48, if you'd like to go any further in that. Um, basically, what we found was that um, ultrasound is really helpful in the inflammatory phase because it... Uh, Simulates the release of histamine from mast cells, and therefore, yeah, it gets basically simulates the inflammatory phase. Um, it can also use in the pro proliferative phase. It simulates fibroblast mi migration, and it's also used in the maturation phase. Increased tensile strength. Um, let's see. Some of the contraindications would be pregnancy. You don't want to use it over the heart or the eyes, or um, if you have a DVT or any malignancies, uh, precautions would be acute infections, bony prominences, growth plates, desensitized areas. Um, but the benefits, so indications would be decreased pain, decreased edema, increased circulation, thrombolysis, resolution of bruises, hematomas, and deep tissue injuries. Um, and it also decreases necrotic tissue. So again, um, I'm not really don't, gonna do it because she doesn't have an actual wound, but you would still apply all the same rules to ultrasound, go you know, where you want it to be perpendicular with the surface, everything we learned when ultrasound, with ultrasound at the beginning of the semester. Um, and you have different parameters for different um, wounds. So like for an acute wound, you would use non-thermal because um, it's in, during inflammation. Uh, it's most effective with the non-thermal and you want a uh, 0.5 watts per centimeter and one megahertz. And for chronic, uh, you want medium intensity ultrasound, so you could do 0.5 to one uh, intensity or watts per centimeter. And that's basically the main parameters. That's pretty much the gist of ultrasound with wound care. Um, do you guys have anything to add? All right, I think we're good to go.